Knowing how to save your work is crucial in your workflow for Photoshop. I've learned a few things along the way, so I'm about to teach you the best ways of saving your work in Photoshop. Starting with the saving methods that you've got available to you. So if you go to File and then Save As, you'll find a variety of different options. It can be overwhelming, but the ones that we're going to look at are saving as a Photoshop file, and a large document format file and why I don't use TIFF. Very often TIFF is the default that comes up when you save, but I prefer to use Photoshop predominantly. Now Photoshop will only save up to two gig in size, so that is where we need that other version. TIFF will save up to four gig in size. However, I have had some major problems with TIFF that I'm going to show you. JPEG will flatten and degrade your image, so you don't want to save it as a JPEG. Usually I save out as a JPEG when I'm working from Lightroom. Now, a couple of years ago, I was working on this image and I had been saving it as a TIFF. The reason being, I could save up to four gig in size and it would save all my layers. Now, as I was working on it, I got towards the end and I pressed save and it was saving okay and then it got up to 98% and at 98% it froze. So I'd been saving it as a TIFF all along, I hadn't saved any other copies and it was saving, 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 got up to 98% and then it wouldn't go any further. Now when you're saving as a TIFF file you get these options. You can, I was saving it on default so I set that I press save and it was processing through until it got to that point and I force quit. I decided I'd already saved it, I was safe enough to force quit and then I'd be able to open up my file. Unfortunately when I hit open after I'd force quit it, everything was completely flattened. I had no more layers, nothing to work with and what had happened was the save had saved all of the information in a flattened file and that last 2% that was going to save the layers had lost out. They'd missed out and I had nothing left. So from this point I decided to only save as Photoshop or large document format. Now the Photoshop format does only save up to 2 gig in size. I'm going to take you through how to do that. So in the options there you would change to Photoshop and you would save it as a PSD file, hit save, and that will save as long as your file is not any bigger than 2 gig, which this one isn't. Photoshop will open in Lightroom, you'll be able to see a thumbnail, you can open it in other software programs that read Photoshop. Photoshop is a great way of saving. Now what happens when your image gets beyond the 2 gig? What do you do? This particular file is nearly 6 gig and it would not save as a Photoshop file. I'm going to show you now what happens when you do try and save it as a Photoshop file and it doesn't work. So many of you may have come up against this problem. You save it as a PSD, the normal Photoshop file, go to Photoshop, press save and the file starts saving. It does not give you an error, it does not give you a warning it simply starts saving until it comes up with this. Now this message probably has you freaking out right about now. Could not save as Mary had a little lamb because the document is bigger than two gigabytes. Please see saving files for more information. Now the help topic, there's no link, there's nothing else. And at this point you're thinking that you can't even save your file and you're freaking out. Don't worry, there is a solution and it's pretty simple, you need to save it as a large document format file. Now, large document format gives you the ability to save at any size. Now, my file sizes can be getting up to 20 gig with all of my layers, so I always need this. Large doc document format can be found in a drop down underneath Photoshop. You save as layers, you don't save as a copy, keep all of those layers, hit save, and make sure it's a PSB, for large document format. This will then save your file, you won't have any limitation at all in Photoshop and you'll be able to keep working.
the limitation that you will have is when you try and open this outside of Photoshop. So if you want to load this into Lightroom, for example, you will find it doesn't work. The normal way that I load up a file into Lightroom by dragging it in does not work with a large document format. It works with a Photoshop file, as you can see here. You just drop it in, the Photoshop file shows up, you add that so that it's showing it from the place in the hard drive that it's stored, import, and it's there. Not a problem. It will show you the thumbnail and you'll be able to work on it and export and do whatever you need to from Lightroom. But a large document file will not work in this way. Do this with a PSB file. It won't load. It won't show in Lightroom. PSB files won't show you the thumbnails. You won't be able to load them in the other software that opens PS. D files, you will only be able to work with it in Photoshop. So how do you get your file into Lightroom? First of all, you want to copy merge. So you want to select your whole image and copy the whole image by clicking on copy merge. That may take a while if it's a large file. Once you've got that copy into the clipboard, you can then create a flat version of your file. So you go to file, new and here you'll see that the clipboard has captured all of the information the pixels the resolution so it's all in the clipboard you simply just hit create you hit command v to paste it or control v and then you save it as a flat version saving my flat images i add the word flat into the name so I don't get confused between my layered file and my flat file. The flat file is the one that I bring into Lightroom afterwards. So it's my finished file that I'm not doing anything else on that I can then do more work on in Lightroom. I can export as different JPEGs and everything else that I want to do from Lightroom. So now you can see the flat version has a thumbnail and I can drag that into my library in Lightroom whereas I couldn't do that with the PSB. So I bring it into Lightroom and I click Add, Import, and that will mean that it's just referencing it from where it is on the drive. And now that it's in Lightroom, it gives me the ability to export out at different resolution, do some extra editing in Lightroom, and finish off my file ready for print. Autosave is so important. To set it up, go to File, Preferences, and File Handling, and you need to set up so that your image automatically saves at set intervals. So out of the box, it comes with automatically saving every 15 minutes, and that's generally enough for people. Obviously, the more you save or the quicker you save, the more uh, performance issues you'll have during working because it does work in the background but if you leave it too long, then you might find that you don't retain all of the changes that you've made if something happens. What could happen? Well, you could lose power, your computer might crash, you know, things happen as you well know, and there's been so many times that this has really saved me because it's saving. But one thing to note, this will not work if you have not saved your file already. So this is why when you first start working, you should always save your file. Even if you think you're only, you've only done a little bit of work, save the file, even if you're at the start. And so from that point, the autosave is happening. If you forget to save, it's still going to save you.